Hi everyone, I'm Mara Webster with SAG After Foundation and we are here today for another one of our conversations at home with the fantastic Sydney Sweeney who is currently starring in Euphoria as Cassie. Um, just a quick reminder that we are continuing to raise funds for SAG After members who've been affected by all the production closer, closures due to COVID-19 and the details and the link for that is in the video description below so please check it out and consider donating if you're able to. Um, I want to thank you so much for joining us today Sydney and I actually wanted to ask you about Euphoria season two because they, I know that you guys started filming and you were in production already when this all happened and when this all shut down so how has that experience been for you guys? Uh, it's definitely been hard because we were so excited to get back together and go back to work and then everything got shut down and, and we're pushed for a while so it's hard. I, I feel really bad for just everyone involved. Yeah. Have you been staying connected to the scripts and to your character in between? Or are you kind of just putting it away and, and you'll pull it back out and, and jump back into the character once you know that things are back in full swing? I'll probably jump back in once we get closer because there's probably going to be rewrites happening and there's so much time to work on the scripts that Sam's going to take to his advantage. Yeah, with the scripts that you've been working on already and shooting for season two, I was interested in kind of the way that your character is continuing to evolve and, and how jumping into a second season with the same characters really allowed you to evolve this character that you developed so strongly already. It's really neat because I've never actually had the opportunity to jump back to a character before. I've always either done one season of a show or did a movie. And so this is going to be the first time that I get to jump back into Cassie and she didn't have an ending. So I get to grow more with her and I get to experience and find new things about the character that I might have not have known about her in the first season. Yeah. And one of the things that's so wonderful watching her is just, you know, she's at that point in life where she's really trying to figure out who she is and, and what's important to her up against what society expects her to be. And I was interested in how you thought about that from your own mindset and how you interspersed that into your performance of the character. Well, Cassie definitely, she, she wants to know who she is and I think that she feels kind of like an outsider even though she doesn't look like one where she has Maddie and so many friends but she doesn't feel like best friends with them where she would rather cry in her own bathroom tub instead of calling someone else and crying to them and I think it's she just she doesn't know how to be vulnerable to anyone else yet because she doesn't feel safe in her own her own bubble and she wants to figure out who she is before she like allows anyone else to see that. Yeah. And even with that slight distance where she kind of draws away a little bit, you know, those female friendships that you mentioned, I think, I think that all of you as a cast so beautifully capture the way that it's, there's such intensity at that age in life, particularly, you know, as a young woman, I think we've all experienced that and, and how you and the rest of the, of the cast set about developing those relationships and really making sure that came across on screen. Yeah, no, we, it was great because when you're working for so long, you get to build a relationship between your characters, but then also as people yourselves. And we all just, we hung out for months and months and months. And so being able to just live in those characters and, and grow more that you might not be able to have the opportunity to do in a couple weeks. Yeah. When you were shooting season one, would you have a lot of rehearsal time before you were going into each episode just to really figure out the beats of each scene together? Uh, we didn't really do rehearsals or have rehearsal time. We did rehearsals for like the cheer dances and I know that the guys did for football practices, but we just, we would jump into a scene and if it didn't work, then we would play around with it and figure it out. And if it did, we just went with it. Yeah. With Sam Levinson, who's the showrunner, what were some of the ways that he really helped you to kind of discover Cassie and, and who she was as a character when you first started playing her that have been really useful for you throughout? I mean, Sam is just an unbelievable, mad scientist genius. He's incredible to work with. He's one of my most favorite filmmakers that I'm probably going to be able to be blessed with working with my entire career. And he just, these characters are so close to him and, and, and what he builds that being able to talk to someone who's so passionate about each and every character and everything that's going on with your character really opens up more ideas within storylines or scripts. And so in the beginning when we were talking, he and I would just sit on the phone and we would talk about the character and different things that would happen and, and different scenes. And, and if we wanted to work on different scenes, like we would send different ideas back and forth. So he's a very collaborative filmmaker and it's amazing to work with that. 
Yeah. Did you know your character's full arc for season one when you went into shooting or was it something where you were discovering and piecing it together as you went along? I knew it from the beginning. It was actually one of the first phone calls I had with Sam when I was debating whether or not to to go with the show and he, he told me the arc. And when I heard about the arc, I immediately was like, okay, I want to do this. Yeah. One of the moments that I loved in the show with your character was when we finally get to understand and learn a little bit more about her backstory and, and with her parents. And I think particularly, you know, the growing absence of her father explains a lot of choices and decisions. And I was interested in, in how just like that particular part of that one episode informed so much of your character and the way that you played her throughout the whole season. I think it's hard, especially for a girl when you lose your father, not only as a father figure, but you lose a friend you lose someone that you thought was a superhero in your life. And it kind of builds this wall up to any other type of love that could scare her in the way of losing, just like she lost her father. And yes, we see her throw her her heart out to all these guys. She, She wants that love, but then she's so scared of it as well. And so I wanted to really show the vulnerability on that side where she's, she's yearning for this love that she lost from her father, but at the same time, she's terrifying. She's terrified of having it because she might lose it. Yeah. Also, I similarly wanted to ask you a bit about the relationship with, um, with her mom in the show as well, because I think that's another really fascinating trajectory where, you know, you hit that age where you suddenly realize that your parents are real people and, you know, there's imperfections there, but you still love them regardless. And it feels like that discovery kind of makes them come much closer to each other. So it's interested in, in how you worked to set out that journey on screen through your performance. Well, Alana, who, who plays our mom, she is, she's amazing. She's hilarious and just a delight to work with. I mean, it's, she, I wish she was on the call because she can just crack a joke out of nowhere and you can't stop laughing for five minutes. And being able to have someone who's just so free and jumps into a character and has fun, I, I honestly, we found our relationship on screen through the characters. It wasn't like something that really had planned out because I more had her, her father's relationship figured out and being able to work with Alana, who's just, just, so free and fun and she she does an amazing job with her character and we just we built the relationship as we worked yeah and you know that scene that's giving us that family backstory for her is obviously done through Rue's voiceover which you know there's a lot of moments in the show where it's really Rue telling us about herself and about these other characters and I was interested from a performance standpoint if there's a way that you prepare any differently because it's obviously a very internalized performance that you're giving in that you're not really able to rely on dialogue in the same way even though it exists it's not coming from your character. I think that sometimes the most powerful performances or movies or shows can be when you can see the character experiencing everything within themselves without actually having to verbally say yeah. what's going on with them and I I loved being able to have like the different backstories and the voiceover because it gave me like hints about my character and I would use that as I would build my character. And, and it was fun because sometimes you don't get that. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the other scenes that you play so wonderfully that I think was one of my favorite ones to watch in the show is, you know, the one where she goes for the abortion. And it felt like it was filmed very differently from the rest of the show. The camera really holds your face in, in a close up throughout the entire time. And, and again, I was kind of interested in how shooting that scene felt different from making the rest of the show for you. Oh, uh, well. It was a very powerful scene. It was a very um, it was a very personal scene, and I think that when you get to stay with Cassie and just her eyes and and where she goes ice skating, and it's just I think it's more powerful than actually seeing what's going on sometimes. Yeah. Do you have anything that you do for yourself to kind of emotionally prepare? Or what kind of headspace do you like to be in before you shoot a scene like that? Because I know that sometimes people will want to be around other people and have discussion about it. Sometimes people need to just go off into a corner and, and have a quiet space. So I was interested in what your process was for that particular scene. Uh, well, I actually, I, I try not to stay in a dark place for too long. I, I think that it's healthier for me personally as an actor and just Sydney. 
uh, to be able to just jump in and out of my characters. I, I build my characters very thoroughly from the day they were born until the first page of the script so that I'm able to just jump in and out of my character without having to really think about what's going on because like right now you and I, I didn't prepare what, what was going to be said. I'm just diving into it. And so I kind of take that approach to my characters. And so for a scene like that, it kind of went into it, joked around with the people who were putting mics on me, laid down, they're like, all right, let's get ready. And then there's like a moment where I guess I escape myself and Cassie comes into me and then I'm Cassie. And then when they say cut, I'm back to Sydney and just goes back and forth like that. Yeah, and from what you were saying just there about the way that you really developed that backstory for your character right from the moment that they were born to really know them um, in and out, I, I loved reading that you create these character books as, as part of that process. And I was really fascinated to know kind of, was that something that you've had as part of your process throughout or how did you develop that for yourself and realize that that was a technique that was really helpful for you? I, I grew up going to like a few different acting coaches here and there, but I always felt that it got me too in my head. And as time went on, I started just writing things down about different characters, whether it was when I was going to auditions or when I would book like a small part on a show or an indie. And I really started diving into it when I booked Everything Sucks and Sharp Objects. And I was filming both of those shows at the same time. And, and I wanted to make sure that I had very two different distinct characters that I was able to jump in and out of. And so I was like, I need to make two separate books and then I just kind of dove into those two and it, it became this thing that I, I love to create, I love to build and it really helps me just make an entire world for my character. Yeah, it sounds like such an amazing technique to have and such a great toolkit for when you walk onto set. Does it really just allow you to very quickly step into new situations or figure out a different approach for your characters? Totally, because something that might have happened to my character when she was five years old that you never even knew about in a script might affect how I might react to something someone says because I talk differently than you talk and we sit differently and we hold our bodies differently and and so when I build a character like that it makes me more aware of who this character is as an actual being especially when I was doing Eden for A Handmaid's Tale she talks completely different than I talk. She talks much softer because women, when you grow up in Gilead, you, she, I wouldn't talk like me. I wouldn't be so assertive when I speak. And, and she's, she holds herself di differently than I do. And, and so when I build these books, it kind of allows me to embrace that without even having to really plan it or, or think about it. Like it just happens weirdly and I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, and that was the first time that you shared one with, with one of your collaborators, with um, Bruce Miller, who's the showrunner. And I was interested in kind of what, what pushed you to that decision to share with him and how that really opened up your collaborative relationship with him as a result. Well, I didn't know the storyline for Eden because they were still writing it as we were filming. And so we were sitting down in the, in the fitting, one of my first fittings, and we were just talking about Eden and, and what might happen to Eden and and so I, I brought up well I have this book and he was like what are you talking about I was like well I don't know if this would be helpful but I have this and I've never shown it before to anyone but Bruce is just such a, a caring amazing producer that I felt comfortable enough to be like here's my 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 bible for Eden and he took it and I had my little sister that I wrote about in one of the scenes and it was, it was really cool. Yeah. What were some of the things that that really helped you to uncover about Cassie as a character through kind of developing that whole backstory and that history for her? Uh, definitely that she's not a typical blonde hottie. She has her nudes out. All that. I wanted her to be more dimensional and through that book I found different aspects of Cassie that I didn't know were there um, especially with her father and her mother and her sister uh, and her friends so and you'll see more of it through season two as well yeah and then how do how did your preparation process differ for you know obviously things are on pause with season two but as you were going into that how did your preparation process differ because you've already you know you've already mapped all of that out so it must be very fluid just to jump into the new scripts 
Yeah, it'll definitely be more fluid and and just taking different different like I guess secrets from future episodes that might lead into why I'm acting a certain way. And it's more just being able to walk into someone else's character. It's like I hit pause on Cassie and I'm going to just like jump right back into her. Yeah. And it feels like it's a character that's connected so well, you know, with, with audiences of every single age. For you as an actor, what are some of the ways in which you feel like this character has uniquely connected you with audiences in a different way to other characters that you've played previously? I think that, one, it's very relevant. I mean, being a teenage girl is a very relatable thing. And one, when you haven't figured out your life, you haven't put everything together, um, struggling with family that either are separated or have drug or alcohol abuse um, and just being a teen girl and, and dealing with growing up in situations and problems and and feeling like you have this whole world on your shoulders and you don't know how to approach anything. Yeah, I wanted to ask you a couple quick questions about some of your other projects. Um, and with Sharp Objects, I loved reading that, you know, part of your research process for that was also, you know, understanding your character's issues with mental health and, and with self-harm and, and mm -hmm. that you really took the time to, to meet with people and also to meet with people who'd lived in a facility similar to your character. And I was interested in, for you, the importance of like really going down that road and making sure that no matter how big or small a character is and their part in the grander scheme of things, that you really put that time into the development process yeah I think that every single character person involved in a project is 100% important because like growing up I might watch a movie or a TV show and there might be like one small character that's in one scene but for whatever reason that character I felt like she or he spoke to me or I related to and and I always wanted to make sure that I was doing my fullest that I could to really bring justice to a character that I'm playing, especially one that struggles with such important issues. And I also felt like I was working with Amy Adams, so I had to make sure that I was really on my, my top game right there. <laughs> <laughs> was there anything that you feel that you learned about acting from getting to work alongside her and just watching the way that she approaches everything? Oh, totally. I mean, we would, especially with working with Jean-Marc also, we would just sit in a scene and the the scene might have ended but Jean-Marc didn't call cut and so we just would stay in it and and she was so amazing with just living in a character and living in a scene with no boundaries and just being able to play off of each other and it was it was a lot of fun I've never really done anything like that before yeah, I also love the way that with Jean-Marc as well, when he's shooting, it sounds like every scene is fluid as it's happening and that he might make adjustments as you're filming, which must have been such a unique experience for you as an actor. And I was, I was curious about the ways in which that really opened you up and if that's kind of informed your process on, on other sets to allow you to be more open to try different things in a on-the-spot moment. It 100% has. I, I find that sometimes the the small moments where you take your beats and you're really just thinking about like in character what's going on can be the most powerful scenes and the po most powerful moments and Jean-Marc I mean you would film and sometimes I wouldn't even know where the camera was and he just allows you to live on this set and it just it feels so real and it makes me want to work on more sets like that. Yeah, and then when you were doing Once Upon a Time in, in Hollywood, you were, that was the first time in your career that you were playing a character who was based on someone real, and that mm -hmm. must have been so interesting having such a dearth of information, because I think she'd written a book as well. That, you that did, you I actually, I, I took that book, and for the book that I created for my character, Diane Lake, she, mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that everything I put in the book was something that either happened to her or she said. So I, I took the book and I literally copy and paste and cut up every single word she wrote down and like rearranged it to work so that nothing I wrote didn't, wasn't said by her, didn't happen, all of that. So it was really cool working with something and someone that was real. Yeah, I just also wanted to ask you about um, your studies because I know that you were taking business studies and that that part of 
taking that university degree was also in being able to understand your contracts and really know what the behind the scenes and the, and the business side is because it's not all front facing. It's not just about the performance. There's so many elements that go into being an actor. And I wanted to ask if there's a, if there's ways in which that's felt you made you feel like you have more autonomy of your career and, and more of an understanding of, of everything that goes into that side of your career. So I always thought that acting and us as actors like we are our own business and we need to take that into consideration and, and not just be like a little pawn to other people and I'm also really interested in different sides of the industry whether it's like behind the camera or wherever and so I wanted to make sure that I could have as much knowledge as possible and my parents always thought it was really important to take school seriously and just make sure that I can be as prepared as I possibly can for anything in my life. And so business school, I love, I love school also. So that was also a part of just going to school and going to college. I am a nerd and I enjoy having homework and I enjoy taking tests and the whole structure of school. So I wanted to continue that into my life. <laughs> I'll probably do school for the rest of my life if I could. That's amazing. And it sounds like in that same vein that, you know, you obviously have a real affinity towards literature and, and I love discovering that you're doing, is it in conjunction with Bustle, you're doing a book club um, yeah. <laughs> where you're reading a couple of chapters and then connecting with people online. And I just, I would love to hear a little bit more about how that's been going and how that's been helping you to really just feel connected to a community when we're obviously all in our homes distancing from each other right now. Yeah, well, I love reading books and I was wanting to find something that I could just be in touch with everyone no matter where they were and I, I was like why not read a book like reading a book is such a great way to kind of just dive into another world and, and take time to yourself and and then we can talk about it all together and I wanted to interact with people more than once a month because that's usually what a book club does and so I was like why don't we just discuss different chapters and so we've been doing that every Thursday on Instagram live and it's been doing really well I mean people send me messages all the time that they're they're discovering new things about the characters and they're enjoying the book and and that the, the book follows two friendships and about how sometimes when you don't communicate with someone that things can just fall apart and when you grow up you fall apart and you grow away and someone actually dm me and they were like reading this made me realize that maybe the way i'm communicating to my friends or my family isn't truly coming across the same way as I feel and I was like oh my gosh I'm glad that <laughs> you read this but it's great it's, it's been it's been doing really well yeah do you have plans for any other books as part of this series I want to I'm trying to figure out what I should read next with everyone so if you have any ideas send them my way <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a thing for you thank you so much for taking time to chat today not just about euphoria but kind of all the behind the scenes in your process I, I love everything you were saying about the character books it's so so fascinating so thank you for sharing that with us and being really open of course thank you thanks bye <laughs> bye